Hey, this is Ryan Phillips here, and this is the uh, third round of the Mind Sports International. I had the black piece against Jeff Galegos. Um, this was the uh, second round of the day after I had beat uh, Tom Brownscomb um, earlier in the, earlier in the day, and um, uh, this is a pretty disappointing effort for me. I kind of hit the wall around move 17 or so. Um, my position was uh, was excellent out of the opening. Um, I thought I was playing very well, and then I just kind of lost energy and focus, and um, offered a draw and move 17, even though my position was better, just for the fact that I could feel that I was getting exhausted, um, which is strange. I mean, this isn't uh, even a very long format. It's just a game in 90 uh, this tournament with a five-second delay, so it wasn't even anything extreme, and uh, there's really no excuse for getting so fatigued. I'm not sure I'm not sure what happened exactly. Maybe just sitting around for a while took its toll on me or, or something. Um, but uh, I wasn't happy with with this effort and uh, anyway here, here goes the game so we went uh, e4 c5 d3 and then um, Jeff really likes these uh, d3 moves against the Sicilian so he plays a very close Sicilian um, I mean uh, the only thing I could say about this move is it seems to work for work for Jeff so I guess he likes having total equality and then um, playing a position that he's very familiar with. So, I mean, maybe there's something to be said for that strategy. So, this is, um, especially with the white pieces. With black, he plays this too, and uh, it's not as easy to get away with this line. But anyway, with the uh, with the white pieces, you can you can make passing moves like this and still be equal. And uh, if he knows the position better than I do, which, which, he, uh, which he will uh, a significant portion of the time, then maybe, you know, his decision makes, makes sense from like a game theory uh, perspective. So I played knight c6, played knight f3, g6, um, bishop e2, so preparing the castle, bishop g7, c3, and I played d6 with the idea of knight f6, so Sorry if I'm not commenting too much in the opening. It's kind of hard to it's hard to explain these type of positions just because nothing um, concrete is really happening. It seems like uh, we're going to get into a close type of game most likely, and uh, both sides are just kind of figuring out where to put their pieces. And it's like what kind of has an inferior um, king's Indian attack kind of set up here with the bishop on e2 rather than fee and Kedem get right away with g3 and bishop g2. Um, so Jeff played h3 here. So after d6, I guess he was worried about my bishop getting to g4 and just trading off the bishop and then playing like knight e5, for example. So I guess that was kind of a threat also with d6. So I played knight f6. I beat a d2. So definitely kind of like a king's Indian setup. Although this pawn on h3 is strange and usually it's g3 and bishop g2. Um, so e5, which was an interesting decision by me. I figured, you know, why let him get d4 in? Uh, I know he's going to try to do that at some point, so I figured I'd stop that move in his tracks. Castle. Castle. Rookie one. And then here I probably was maybe a little impatient, but uh, I don't really mind this move. I thought it was a good good idea to, to play d5, and um, I thought I was uh, just as well developed as my opponent, if not a little better. So I figured why not try to open up the position and see what happens. So play bishop f1. And then here I actually kept this tension a little bit longer, but I was kind of worried uh, about my e5 pawn being a little weak in this position. Uh, maybe unnecessarily, since if he takes on d5, I just take. But I also didn't want to give him this e4 square either. Um, so I saw a line like, um, all right, so showing b6. So let's say this was played. I saw like this with the idea of like f5, maybe even h6 first and then f5. Um, but I didn't care for this too much. I guess the computer's showing there's a better move than uh, than queen e7 though. I guess just bishop to b7. But um, I'm also like, I, this is something I definitely want to start studying more when I could do this double fee and keto because I always read in books that it was bad to do this, but it seems like a lot of super GMs are doing this and of course, just like anything in chess, I'm sure it's like a you know an it depends axiom. Like uh, sometimes it'll work, sometimes it won't. But I'm trying to. I don't know exactly when I could double fee and keto. I guess if it makes sense logically for development, I could do it. Um, 
but I always hear that it's not that it's always uh, always is not the right word. But I was reading that it was generally speaking, it's better not to think it both of the bishops because you want one bishop to kind of exert a direct pressure on your opponent's position. At least that's the idea I read, but I am have to uh, reevaluate my thought process on that one. Uh, so d5, bishop f1, d4. And um, I thought this was a good move, uh, getting the space advantage, even though it does concede the c4 square, but I thought this was okay because after e takes, knight takes, the c4 square is conceded anyway. And I just think this uh, light square bishop is going to have a hard time getting active. The only real um, pawn break for white now is f4 that I have to worry about. And other than that, the center is pretty, uh, pretty solid for the whole game. So knight c4. Played queen e7. Which the computer doesn't seem to like. They keep recommending this, this move. C takes d4. But I don't know. I think this position should be okay for, for black. Um, so a4, which is a typical uh, King's Indian attack move, basically just uh, securing his line c4 by preventing a uh, b5 push from from black. Okay, so here I played h6. So basically, I want to play the bishop to e6, and I don't want to allow uh, knight g5. Uh, maybe h6 wasn't so great. Maybe just bishop e6. I don't know. And also, I can't play bishop e6 immediately because uh, then the e5 pawn's hanging. And, um, oh yeah, h6 also prevents bishop g5. So I, I, I like h6, actually. Okay, so h6. g3. And then here I just really wanted to get rid of this knight on c4, so I found the way I thought was a pretty nice plan with knight e8. Bishop g2. Knight d6. And here I was starting to get a pretty significant time advantage, about 10, 12 minutes. Um, so, I mean, I don't know why I was taking just so long, to be honest, in some of these positions to make a move, but... Uh, my moves were real easy to make. I thought everything I was I was making these moves instantly because there was really he wasn't really threatening anything, and I thought these were the best ways to improve my uh, pieces. So there wasn't too much for me to think about at this stage in the game. Uh, so we took on d6, and I took back, and I'm uh, pretty happy with my position right now. So we played queen c2. Uh, the only way I consider is bishop e6. I played this maybe after about 10 seconds of thought. Um, I don't know. I, I just I really liked my position here. The problem is I didn't know what to do with this nice position. Um, so that's, you know, definitely, uh, so I need to improve on that as well. So definitely some good things to take out of this game where I can improve, uh, improve my chess. Um, so after bishop e6, uh, knight d2. So I did just to go to knight, to knight c4. So I played uh, rook a d8. And then this if he plays knight c4 here. I believe I could just um, take, and then this d3 push looks good. And then say he plays here, and uh, yeah, so this is all just very, very nice for black. So rook a d8, and I'm also threatening, um, if he makes a move, I'm also threatening d take c3. with the idea of playing uh, queen takes uh, d3 at some point, or actually uh, immediately afterwards. Um, so here uh, we saw c4. So I was pretty happy here. I mean, the position is very locked up, and um, uh, I think I have just a better position here. Um, so unfortunately, for some reason I didn't play knight b4. I just didn't see anything. I didn't see... I don't know, I just didn't see why this was good, I guess. Um, yeah, I guess I just, um, I, I missed this, um, I missed F5 here, I think, in this position. So, yeah, I think I'm already. I think I didn't. I think I was too negative uh, in this position. I didn't. Um, I don't know. I just. I. 
I think maybe I was lacking confidence. I have no idea why, because I was I was playing so well that day. Uh, yesterday I played very well early against Tom Brownscombe and um, playing very good here against Jeff. So I don't know why uh, why I didn't fall through my plan. Um, so here I th kind of maybe chicken out. I guess I played King H7, which I'm still not exactly sure what the idea behind this move is, and I offered a draw to Jeff, um, knowing that my position is a little bit better. But I just um, I was hitting a wall and. Uh, for some reason, I couldn't think of a plan for black, uh, you know. So, I think I've been pretty forthright. Uh, I think close positions are kind of a weakness, and um, I really don't mind giving away this information because I'm trying to improve in close positions, and uh, if my opponents want to play close positions against me, I'm happy to um, play them just so I can can get a little bit better in them. And uh, it's still, you know, I don't think it's a weakness that I'm, you know, I don't think I'm like 1100 or anything in close positions. I think I can still play, you know, 18, 1900, but... I think in the open positions I could, you know, I could play it significantly better. So I'm trying to work on on playing these close positions until, uh, until like my weakness becomes kind of a strength. So we had knight f1, and then again knight b4 looks good. Uh, unfortunately, I played f5 here, which maybe uh, gives away the advantage. So I think I have to. I have to kind of create more weaknesses in my opponent's position to be playing f5, so I should have been more patient. And I think this has a lot to do with fatigue also. Um, so he took on f5. And again, I hope this doesn't come across as an excuse. It's not meant as one. I just, um, if, you know, if you just want to say I played badly, that's fine because that, that's true uh, from this stage. But um, I was feeling very tired. Uh, so anyway, um, and you know, uh, I'm sure everyone at this, you know, I'm sure everyone was feeling tired. So I'm not like, not like I was in a different situation. Um, just, you know, normally I fatigue wouldn't hit me this hard, so it was disappointing. Uh, so queen e2. Now I play knight b4. And he found this move, rook a3, which I actually missed. Uh, but it's actually not so great. I have this e4 pawn push I could play. Or um, queen f6, which I still don't... I have no idea why queen f6 is a good move, to be perfectly honest. Um, the only thing I can think of is I'm piling up pressure on the f2 pawn, so... Which... Uh, which I guess is a this is a move I should be able to find. So I guess is this the idea? So I don't know. So I guess um, this is a variation I sh I could possibly I should have found. I guess. Um, so here I think I just started after I missed rook a three. I think I started panicking. So. Um, Jeff told me after the game that he thought e4 was a good move, and um, this was also a move I missed. Um, but I'm not gonna hard myself for this. This would have been seen. I would have to calculate pretty well to to see this. So I have to basically give up the pawn and retreat the bishop. And the idea is to play d3 and then uh, knight c2. And I actually did see this this kind of variation a few moves later, and I don't think it worked anymore. So I was wondering if I missed it, and I was kind of upset with myself for not considering it more strongly. Um, earlier when when I so here I could play e4 and then um, yeah, and if bishop takes then um, I think this was pretty interesting you have this knight c2 move forking the rooks so this would have required some uh, some impressive calculating ability or some skills here um, which I didn't uh, come up with, unfortunately. So I could have, I could have played some good moves here. So it seems like these nuances I kind of miss sometimes. And I think the last game against Jeff, I missed the, this nuance, and he got in a good position. I was totally even then at the opening, and um, luckily he blundered in that game, and I ended up winning that. Um, but here, I mean, this are, these is good for me. This is kind of what I, got, I have to learn. So if I could play a move like e4, um, you know, hopefully this is something I won't miss again. Um, so I played uh, queen d7, which is not a very good move. g4. It should be 6. And then after the game, Glenn told, uh, not Glenn, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Jeff told me thought um, that he was totally fine here, which the computer is uh, pretty much backing up his assessment. Knight g3, rook d8, um, bishop e4. Yeah, I thought he was building up some kind of kingside attack and I was feeling some pressure here, so I think I started panning here. I played uh, knight c6. If 
played rook f1, which was an interesting idea. So I think his idea is just to push with f4. Played knight d8, which was a pretty slow plan, which actually is just a terrible plan. He played bishop d2. And I played knight f6, f7 immediately, which I regret, since this is a very bad move, which loses. Um, Jeff found this nice tactic with bishop takes g6. And the idea is if I take, which I didn't, he has this queen e4 check. Knight h5, and that's going to win the uh, bishop on uh, g7. And then also he's attacking the rook on e8 and the bishop on e6. And my king is very exposed, so this is all pretty bad for me. So I'm with king g8. And I'm not really sure why this is better than king h8, just kind of a feel thing, I guess. Um, so here, my position is very bad. Obviously, I'm down a pawn, and my uh, knight's pinned on f7. Uh, so, of course, uh, here, I'm already being... I'm kind of feeling deflated already. Um, so, knight e4. Queen e7. King g2. Uh, rook d8, just to get out of the pin. There wasn't anything too spectacular about, about that idea. And then back to g3. So just really just kind of staying on the position, seeing what I want to do. Knight g5. f3. Bishop d7, just, just swing it to c6. Bishop f5, bishop c6 h4, and then here I think I panicked, so I could play on and try to come up with some counterplay, but I think I just panicked here with this knight takes f3. So this is a very losing move. I just thought I would get more compensation for it than I actually did. Um, so there's not much more to say from here on out, just um, Jeff did a good job mopping up. Okay, one, rook d6. Uh, I believe that was played. Hold on. Um, no, no. Queen e7 first. Rook h1. Rook d6. a5. Queen c7. Right back to e4. Rook a6. b4, c takes, takes, I thought about playing rook takes a5 here just to, oh no, never mind, yeah, because he has this move, never mind, I actually saw that this uh, rook takes a5 is not good here, so I play rook f7, let's see 5, Rook c6, which probably was a mistake. Queen d5. Bishop f8. Knight e6. Rook takes. Bishop takes. Bishop takes before. And Jeff played rook f1. And uh, here I resigned. So uh, I thought Jeff did a good job. I think that tactic I missed bishop takes g6 was obviously very important. Um, but just a lot of credit to Jeff. I thought he played a great game. Um, hope everyone enjoyed. I would kind of talk about it a little bit more, but I'm feeling kind of exhausted right now. Um, so anyway, um, anyway, it's uh, Ryan Phillips uh, signing off, and I uh, hope you enjoyed the game. And uh, Jeff went on to win this tournament with four and a half out of five. So, of course, uh, big congratulations to Jeff on a job very well done. All right, thank you for watching.